You're listening to Wiretap with Jonathan Goldstein on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius Satellite Radio 137. Today's episode, Rainy Day Blues. Last Thursday, I boiled eggs for my daughter Zuzu's breakfast, and I used the stopwatch on my wristwatch to make sure they were cooked for the perfect amount of time. Today is Sunday, three days later, and I just noticed that the stopwatch is still going. It reads 79 hours, 12 minutes, and 43 seconds. Knowing precisely how long it's been since I boiled Zuzu's eggs fills me with a sudden sadness over the fleetingness of time. It's like how once every year there comes a point where the telephone wire on my office phone becomes so tangled that I must untangle it. I take it off the hook, dangle it, watch it spin, ruminate melancholically upon the passage of another year, and hope nobody walks by my office door and judges me a simpleton, thinking that untangling phone wire is all I do with my day. Today is such a damp, overcast Sunday that earlier, unable to think of anything better to do, I settled in for a nap. And now, three and a half hours later, I awake on the couch, but rather than feeling refreshed, I feel discombobulated, depressed, and nauseous. I go into the kitchen to make some coffee, or tea. I can't decide which, but then something pops into my mind. Perhaps a good way to mix things up is to mix the same old atoms of life into new molecules. And so to this end, I decide to dunk a tea bag into my coffee. I do so and take a sip, and I am thoroughly grossed out. But at least I feel as though I have made some effort to quote-unquote mix it up. I fear that my life has grown so dull and I have become so boring that if I lived in Paris in the 20s and was friends with Anais Nin, I would never even make it into her journal. I could just see it. After a day together spent apple picking in the French orchards, she'd write extensively about the outfit she wore, the grandeur of the trees, and the charming farmer who lent us baskets. She'd even write a full page about his dog, a near-dead basset hound named Monsieur Choufleur but I wouldn't merit so much as a single word. At a complete loss as to what to do with the last dregs of the weekend, I decide to write in my own journal. The only problem with this plan is that I have absolutely nothing to write about. I sit with my notebook, racking my brain for an amusing anecdote, an entertaining quote. I sit there, vainly trying to suck the marrow of the past couple days for some kind of juice. No dice. I decide to stare at the blank paper until inspiration strikes or until some other form of distraction presents itself. Mr. John Goldstein. Hey, Howard. How are you doing? What a, what a gray, rainy, miserable day today, huh? Yeah, it's, I guess so. They say it's going to maybe rain like this for the next two, three days. That's so. Yep. Yep. That's great. Okay, Howard, Wait, I, I, I do need to get back to work. I, I'm just trying to pass the time. I don't have time to pass right now. Look, man, I'm just bored. I'm bored. I'm so bored. Well, you know what they say about being bored, huh? Well, well it's going to be some zinger, right? Like, uh, boring people get bored, right? You're just going to find... Well, that is true, yes. That is what I was going to say. You're just going to insult me. Well, there's no reason why you can't, you know, put on a raincoat and go take a walk. This is the kind of day I just I just can't bear to leave the house. I haven't even taken Desi out yet. Well, you got to walk your dog, how? Ah. Uh, He'll be okay. They can hold it in for, like, days, the way I understand. No, that's not so. Yeah, that's they not... say minimum 12 hours, maximum three days or something like that for a dog. I think you probably want to take him out for a walk. He hates the rain. He just really doesn't like it. He's spiteful, just like his old man. Hey, Desmond? Hey, Desi boy? Yeah. Listen, he's right. Listen, listen. Yeah, I, do, I don't hear anything. Look, look, Howard, I'm going to let you go, okay? I should probably... You're go. busy. I'm pretty busy, yeah. I'm just... Maybe something I can help with. Maybe there's something I could... Uh... Actually, you know, there is a way that you can help. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay, you're going to tell me by like, getting off the phone and letting you That's do your work. I was going to say. I hate when you do that. I, I don't really like when you do that joke. It's kind of hurtful. And I'm sorry. I, I just think it's a, it's, a, it's a really gray, hazy day. I... And there ain't a thing to do except but to pass the time, while away the hours, chit-chat and whittling sticks and eating pickles. That's all I see, my friend. There's just nothing to do in a day like today. As Howard speaks on, I find myself slowly start to fade. 
listening more to the rain outside my window than to his voice. The rain fills me with nostalgia, memories of youth, of walking home from school in the rain, of long, almost endless seeming baths, about trips to the beach, and even about sharks. When I was a kid, I used to spend about 80% of my time worrying about being eaten by sharks. This was during the 70s, and I guess what with all the movies like Jaws, Jaws 2, and Jaws 3 in 3D, everyone was. The threat felt so real that merely going to the beach felt like an act of daredevilhood. I remember dropping a hard-boiled egg into the surf to see if a shark would come by and get it, to see if it was safe to swim, and my dad yelling at me to never mind the shark, he was going to murder me with his bare hands for wasting eggs. But nowadays, or at least on some days, being eaten by a shark doesn't seem all that bad. I mean, it would be bad, but after the first couple bites, I suspect no worse than listening to someone talk about their RSP contribution, or putting up a carport, or holding the phone away from your ear as a dear friend goes on and on about matters that could put a trained psychoanalyst to sleep. The wetness on the leaves and the, the dew on the grass and hello yes I, I honestly I can't believe that you're still talking Why did I, you... I put the phone down and went back to work about 25 minutes ago and I... you, you were talking that entire time well no offense that was the best part of the conversation so far all right well you uh, you take care now and wait, uh, wait, wait I, just because uh, I want to ask you um um that's how I like money, lots and lots of money, each and every day. No, I don't. Funny how many songs about money, eh? I'm talking about money, money. Howard. I'm talking about money, Okay, money. Howard, Howard. I'm going to go now. Yo, listen, listen to Desi Snork. Listen, listen. You hear that? I it's don't so know what cute. I'm... It's so cute. It just kind of lulls me to sleep. It makes me feel all cuddly and warm. Okay, Howard. I'm getting. Oh, oh! Uh, I cut my own hair today. Did I tell you that? I got this thing called the Trimco 3000. What do you mean, a product for cutting your own hair? Yeah, yeah. It saves me a lot. Like I'm not exactly. I don't really spend tons of my haircuts. I, it's like I'm a ten dollar haircut guy. But this will save me ten bucks every four months, and it's just like you only cut your hair once every four months. Yeah, I like I like going from A to Z. I don't like just in between business. My hair is short. My hair's awkward, my hair's long. My hair's short, my hair's awkward, my hair's long. Oh, I didn't know that you ever had such an interest in cutting your own hair. So, yeah, so, yeah. so you, what, what is this thing called? It, it, it's the Trimco 3000. That's and where did you name. find it? Well, I, I'm, I'm actually quite pleased you're asking me. It was it was a day, not unlike today, mm-hmm. gray, boring day. And uh, I was on, my, on, the, on the internet, and I was doing the email, and I was so bored, I basically just opened up all my junk email, all the stuff you're not supposed to open, and decided to go for it virus be damned that's that's pretty bored i clicked on on emails promising to win a fortune be my own boss all this kind of stuff people from from malaysia trying to get in touch with me because there's some kind of a account you know oh, by the way if you ever get that someone writes you like from 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 asia or africa and they're saying that, they're, that there's money owed to you like mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of dollars it's not true oh you don't say thanks for the tip anyway then i see this thing cut your own hair mm-hmm. well, i clicked on it and it was so great, and I, I just couldn't believe it. And I was like, mm. this thing, i got to have this thing. So luckily, I still had your credit card number from, from the last time you lent me your card. When did I lend you my card? Anyway, so I ordered the, the Trimco, uh-huh. and I mean, I got it within a week. And I mean, I, I mean, so much fun. I gave myself quite the fetching haircut. I really? It actually in. looks good? I think it looks really good. You know, it's like you just, it's just like seizing control of your own body. I don't know why the idea is so appealing to me of actually being able to uh, to cut your own hair. But it's it's always a... Uh... Absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, I can't think of anything that's really more empowering or more important. I clean my own ears. I fix my own breakfast sometimes. And I think it's just really great if, you know, to have this tool. And you're actually happy with it. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's as, it it looks as good as something you, you've gotten in a barbershop. Even better. Wow. I mean, I'm not married, but let's just say that these days I'm well groomed. <laughs> you know, uh, I was actually considering going to get a haircut. Uh, Why? I have this trim coat. You take it; it's yours. You paid for it. Yeah, it's a great thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll I'll pass by on my way home from work if that's okay, and on, I'll I'll pick oh, it up. Oh, so great! I'm so happy. No. I'm, okay. I'm, well, I'll, I'll I'll see you then. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, well, I'd love to have you also. Um, 
Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. When, when you buy honeydew melon at the store, yeah. Like, do you actually come right out and say, "Do you have any honeydew melon?" I, I'm always a little bit like self-conscious asking for the honeydew. Okay, why? It's such a weird name, honeydew. It sounds almost pornographic. Honeydew. Honeydew. Hello. Yes, hello. Is is this Trimco Industries? Oh, um, <clears throat> sorry. Yes, Trimco Industries. How may I direct your call? Well, okay, well, I bought your, your Trimco 3000 for cutting my own hair. The home hair care salon in a box? Yes. The 3000? Yes. yes, and I wanted to get my money back. Is it not working for you? No, sir? it's not working. I can't, I, I can't leave the house. You know, without without a hat on, and and the blade on it is it's it's like making my scalp bleed. Oh, that's not good. Um, hold on a minute, and I'll I'll put you through to our sales department. Okay, okay? fine. Yeah. If you can just hold a minute. O- okay. Please stay on the line. Your call is very important to us. A Trimco sales specialist will be with you in the order your call is received. Be sure to ask about our Trimco loyalty points program. Please stay on the line. Your call is there. Hi, this is the sales department. Yeah, okay. Um, I bought your Trimco 3000, and it's it's crap. Um, there's no need for that kind of language, sir. It's like my whole my whole scalp is scraped. Your whole scalp is scraped? Yeah, it's scraped. I'm. It's, it's like bleeding. Really? The, the blade shouldn't be making actual contact with your skin. Well, no, it should There should be like a, a guard on the blade. Well, th- there should be, yeah, but there isn't. Do you have the box? Yeah, I have the box. Check inside the box. Mm -hmm. Is there anything? No, I'm turning it upside down right now. There's nothing. It was supposed to come Um, with an instructional DVD. There's. It didn't come with that either. This. uh, I think you might be missing some parts. Mm -hmm. I'm going to transfer you to the manufacturer. So I'm just going to put you on hold for a minute because they're they're not here. They're off site at the factory. Yes. Okay. Sure. Well, just one sec. All right. Please stay on the line. We'll be with you in the order that your call is received. Uh, be sure to ask about our Trimco loyalty points program. Hey, Trimco. Hi, yeah. This is the factory floor. Who's who's calling, please? I, I was just transferred to you from... You're going to uh, have to speak up because I'm here manufacturing things. Okay. I can't hear so All right. Well. I'm, I'm trying to return this Trimco 3000. It doesn't work. Um, are you using it correctly? I, I assume I am. I mean, you're just supposed to slide it over your head, right? And you make the adjustments how long you want your hair to be? Yep. You know, a kid can use it. Well, maybe I should get a kid to help cut my hair because I, I'm, I'm making my head bleed. Oh, you shouldn't make your head bleed. There should be a guard. There, there's no guard. There's no guard, so you're missing a guard. Hold on. Someone on the assembly line is, uh, is uh, responsible for that. That's not good. One sec. Yeah. Pedro. Did you pack a Trimco machine without a guard? I don't know. I think you did. I'm, I'm going to have to fire you, Pedro. That's really bad. Please don't fire me. It's Christmas time and I need some job. No, Pedro, forget it. Uh, you're, you're fired. Oh, no. Okay, sir, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I've, I've fired the fellow who left out the guard. Uh, you, you, di- you just fired that man? We, we have a zero-tolerance policy here at Trimco for um, slip-ups. You just leave now, Pedro. Okay, I'm leaving now, sir. Very, very sorry. That's right, Pedro. You just get out. Look, um, I, I don't know what kind of company you're running, but... Well, I'm not I, running the company, sir. I just manage the uh, factory. Okay, so I, I need... In Malaysia. You're in Malaysia? Yeah. It's um, very late here. Right. That, that Okay, I was just transferred to Malaysia. Yeah. Is, is, there, is there some kind of manager or someone that I can speak to? Because I, I don't... I'd, I don't need this whole song and dance. I would just like to have my money refunded. It's supposed to come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, okay, well, this is, this is not my department, obviously, so I'm, I'm going to try and transfer you back to uh, North America. And uh, uh, if you could talk to a sales associate again. Okay. Please stay on the line. Oh, for God's sake. Your call is very important to us. You, you sound exactly like the guy I was just sure. talking to. Be sure, be sure to ask this about This isn't our, even a recording. Please stay on the line. Your call... Your call... A recording doesn't stutter. Just one sec, okay? Yeah. I'll try and find someone. One sec. Unbelievable. Hello, this is the returns department. Oh, is it? You know, because you sound remarkably uh, similar to the guy in, in, in your Malaysian factory. He, he's my brother. He's your brother in Malaysia. He's 
not Malaysian. He went out to Malaysia to run the factory. I see. So Trimco is a family operation. Yes, we're very proud of our products in the family. Okay. Could we just cut right to it? I, I, I would like to get my money back. Uh, well, we could send you a DVD and the head guard. You know what? I doubt the existence, even at this point, of a DVD. No, we have a DVD. What? No, you have a DVD. Yeah, it's, it's a terrific DVD. Oh, is it? a kid cutting his own hair. Yeah, okay. Well, All just, right. Hold on. I'm going to load up a copy of the DVD. With the new Trimco 3000 home hair salon in a box, everybody can get into the family groove of grooming themselves. Why, look, even Junior can do it. See how easily he does it? Just taking the guard and putting them over the blade. Look, Mom, no hands almost. Everybody's looking snazzy with the Trimco 3000. See, see, I, I, uh, uh, no, was, I, I got that DVD. That was you. No, I was just playing you a DVD. Okay, l- look. There was music. I don't have music. Look, you know what? I mean, this is a danger, you know? I might have tetanus. Well, I'm sure you don't have tetanus. Come on. I mean, what, what, is it rusty? I mean, it, it looks like junk. It looks well, like something that someone assembled in their garage. Well, let's not make things ugly. You know, I have a bleeding head. Well, you know, I'm getting you know, blood all over the place. I've, I've ruined two shirts I, and uh, pillowcases. I, I don't know what to... I, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, transfer you to the CEO, okay? Will that, will that satisfy you? Okay. What is this man's name? Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tepperman. Okay, fine. Yeah, put me through to Mr. Tepperman. Just one minute. I'll okay. put you on hold. Yeah, I don't even know why. I'm... Please stay on the line. But, uh, your call is very important to us. You, you were just playing that music. Please. Uh, just one sec. Okay, here, come, here comes Mr. Tepperman. Hello, this is Mr. Tepperman. Mr. Tepperman. Just one sec. Yeah, send those. Uh-uh. No, the other one. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Tepperman. Uh, I... Sorry, hello? Yes? Listen, I know it's you. You know, I've been talking to you for the past 15 minutes. I've been talking to the same person on hold, Malaysia. Oh, were you transferred to the factory in Malaysia? Were they helpful? There is no factory in Malaysia. I was transferred from you to you to you. That's where I was transferred. Ah, uh, but you and I have just only been speaking for about a minute or so because I, I'm very busy. I was in a meeting. I was called out of a meeting. Yes, I'll be right back there. I'll be right back. Can you give me my money back? Please. We're not in the habit of giving uh, money back. We could. We, it's certainly redeemable for other Trimco products. Oh, really? So there's the Trimco 4000, which comes with a blow-drying attachment. Mm-hmm. And there's the Trimco 2000, which has no DVD. You know, so maybe I was sent the Trimco 1000, the one that doesn't have the guard, the one that makes your head bleed. There is no Trimco 1000. I'm very mm-hmm. sorry that your head is bleeding, but there's no need to make fun of what my family has been doing for three generations. Your family's been doing this for three generations. Yes, it was my it was my grandfather who uh, actually sold a comb where some of the teeth were made out of razor blades, and he sold that to miners so they could stay well groomed during the gold rush. And uh, <laughs> you think you think your head is bleeding now? You should have seen some of the old tin type photographs that we have in the company archives, and uh, never a word of complaint. But I'm I'm very sorry that you're. I, we will absolutely send you your money back. May I ask uh, which uh, correctional facility you're at, and can I have your inmate number? What, what is that supposed to mean? I'm not in prison. Uh, you're not in prison? No. Oh. Why would you assume that I'm in prison? Most of our business is either prison or nursing homes. What, what are you insinuating? Where do you live that you can't find a barber shop? You're the one that sells this product, okay? I, I'm a client. You know, so it didn't work. Throw it away. Move on. This is how you take God. responsibility for your product. I mean, clearly there was a part missing. I mean, who puts an open blade on their head? You have to be a numbskull. It's... What was that? What was what? Was that a toilet flushing? No. Absolutely not. Are you in a bathroom? No. I'm in my ex- uh, office, in my executive office. Teddy, I've been in the bathroom for hours. Who is that? Uh, that's a client. That's a client. Uh, a walk-in client. Uh, just one moment. Hurry up. There's, there should be three copies there. I yeah. need a phone. Mom, I'm trying to make a sale here. It's taking so long. There's customer. I'll be, I'll be out in a second. I told you, I don't want you using the house phone for that nonsense. When are you going to move out and get a real job already? I will move out tomorrow. No questions asked. You will never see me again. I will be gone. Gone from your life. Teddy? Yeah? Send me my money back. 
Okay, well, fine. But I, I got some advice. You, you need to get out more. I don't need your advice. Just Who send me the money. Who needs to cut their own hair? Who can't walk out of their well, apartment? I mean, you know, like, barbershops are closed on, on Mondays often. And you're, you're a control freak. I, well, you can't let someone else cut your own hair? It's not that I can't. Oh, God, this is so sad. I can hardly stand it. You're telling me this is sad? I mean, I'm 44 and I live with my mother and you're breaking my heart. Hello. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Gregor. Hey, you know how you always tell me that you're too proud to take a fall? Like if you were a boxer, you would never throw a fight? I don't remember saying that. But I was thinking I, about it yeah. relative to your career and your lack of one. I, and, listen. you know, I think you have this kind of lobo solo idea, like you're just going to make it on your own. You're a lone wolf. I don't think of myself as a lone but wolf. But I think you could get a shortcut to that deluxe apartment in the sky if you would join the Canadian show business mafia. What Canadian mafia? The one that, like, Lorne Michaels started that got all these Canadian, like, uh, John Candy guys to be famous. You know, there's a million of them. No, I don't know that there's any kind of mass underground conspiracy. What do you think the mafia wants you to think? Speaking as an American, I remember when these first Canadians came across the border, these these show business Canadians, Uh I got very defensive because I thought, hey, there's a lot of great talent in this country, this country being America. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what are all these Canadians doing? And they just kept coming over one after another relentlessly taking away jobs in comedy and show business from Americans. I'm talking about big guys. Like, John Candy is not hard to miss. And he just came walking across the border just like in the broad daylight. Okay, Gregor, do you hear what this is making you sound like? Proud to be an American? No, you're sounding like one of those guys who are, like, uh, you know, afraid to have illegal immigrants coming across the border. Hey, I'm not talking about building a fence along the southern border of the United States. I welcome Mexican comedians. Bring them on. Because I think so far there's been, like, two. Juan Valdez, who's not even really a comedian, he just sells coffee. He's not a comedian. And Jose Jimenez, who did that whole thing about, like, I'd like to be in America. That's from West Side Story. So you just proved my point. That doesn't prove anything. There's tons and tons of Mexicans, and very few are trying to take away jobs in the United States from the comedians. Now, Canadians, there's only, like, what, 11 million Canadians in the whole country of Canada? And yet there's, like, 500 comedians, movie stars, actors, famous people. And you know what they all have in common? Talent. They're talented. They're Canadian. It just we're we're a funny people. We yeah. Howie Mandel is really funny. You know why Howie Mandel is successful? Because he's Canadian. He signed a blood oath. The same one Lauren Elliott signed. The same one Mike Myers signed. All these guys. Jim Carrey. And so, what do you think that they meet in some kind of like underground chamber, like the Masons or something? Yeah. You know what? It's exactly like the Masons. They meet it underground. Is. They're just regular people. You maniac. Who, who's they? What is her? Wax in your ears, the Canadian Mafia is they. Well, where, where do they, like, wh- would I look them up in the Yellow Pages? What kind of mafia is listed in the Yellow Pages? What do you think, the Sicilian Mafia takes out ads in the back of the penny saver? Do you, you think the Yakuza is running clickable pop-up banner ads on the internet? Okay, so, no. right. The Yakuza doesn't have any banner ads, Johnny. And just the same, the Canadian Mafia doesn't have a marquee on the middle of Rue Saint-Denis in Montreal with, like, a big sign out front that says, Canadian Mafia. It's just once you're in the know. And I'm, okay, so so what do you, what do you suggest? I'm saying just join the inner circle, because right now you are stuck in the middle of a cornfield in the middle of showbiz nowhere. That's where you're at in your career. I, now, here's where I I'm, want you to be. I want magazines every week to report, oh, he broke up, maybe he's pregnant, he's going to adopt a child from Africa, he's doing all kinds of things. That's where you could be if you would join the Canadian show business mafia. And how exactly do you propose that I get in touch with this supposed Canadian showbiz mafia? You can't get in touch with them. They'll cut your head off and throw you off a dock. You've got to wait for them to get in touch with you. Paul Schaefer and Howie Mandel will. This is how it works. You let it be known that you're ready, mm-hmm. and that's it. They contact you. Well, how do I let them know? If you tell me you're into it, I can make a few phone calls, put it out there, and I'm not guaranteeing you anything, but I'm saying that you could be the next Kim Cattrall. You remember from Sex and the City? How can I be like Kim Cattrall? Well, you know, you have a few things in common with it already, and that both of you are long past your prime, oh, but she held up really well. You just tell me I'm ready. Just say it. Say the words. I'm ready. Okay, fine. I'm ready for it. Okay. What's going to happen? It's happened already. Oh? And now that you're in the Canadian Mafia, congratulations. It's working for you already. I I got an inquiry very recently from a casino. Since when are you taking inquiries for me? Just like the Rat Pack. You're going to be playing casinos. And, And who exactly did you receive this inquiry from? A woman of my acquaintance who's actually married to my brother. Your sister in law. That's one word for her. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's actually going to be a, a charity bingo casino. What's a charity bingo casino? 
Well, you know, when schools try and raise money, they hold like a, a bingo thing and they don't play with real money. But what you spend on chips, you give toward a donation toward the school. And, and, and so my nephew is in this school and they needed someone to host it. And I said I would work my show business contacts and get you to do it, which, by the way, I did because you just agreed to it. No, and I didn't. No, when did once I? Once we have an oral contract, you are not allowed to break that. And so this whole thing about the Canadian mafia, that's what all this was leading to? I don't know what you're talking about, but you just agreed to host it and that's that. I didn't agree to anything. Well, that's nice, Johnny. Why don't you disappoint the children? No one wants to. What do you want? You want to start at the top? Is that what you want? I'll get you a two year gig in Vegas. That's no problem. What do you want? The Palms? Zem Jem Grand okay with you? I'm not. Here's a headline for you. Who the hell are you? Why does it have to turn so ugly so fast? You know what? I am going to call up my Canadian mafia friends, but not my show business mafia friends, my real Canadian mafia friends. And you know what they're going to do? What? They're going to cut off a moose's head and put it in your bed. That's not funny. One day, you're not going to know when. You're going to be walking down some block, and you're going to get beamed in the back of the head with a snowball. Mercilessly beamed. C-A-N-A-D-A. Tell me, what's a Douglas fur? C-A-N-A-D-A. Bet you never heard of Bobcat fur. C-A-N-A-D-A. Have you ever seen a lobster crawl? In Canada, we get to see them all. On Wiretap Today, you heard Howard and Desmond Chakowitz, David Rakoff, Andrea Stanford, and Gregor Ehrlich. Wiretap is produced by Jonathan Goldstein, with Mira Bertwintonic and Carolyn Warren. Production assistance from Crystal Duhame. Reach us through our website at cbc.ca slash wiretap.